Hello, I'm Dr. Susan Timoney, an Associate Professor of Practice in the School of Theology and Religious Studies at the Catholic University of America in the area of Pastoral Studies. In the Gospel of John, as Jesus is preparing to send his disciples out to begin their missionary work, he commands them to go and bear fruit. This is just one of a number of times that Jesus uses the image of fruitfulness to describe the vibrancy of a mission-oriented church and a mission-oriented disciple. Understanding the meaning of bearing fruit is essential to effective pastoral planning for two reasons. Firstly, it helps us to recognize that pastoral planning is different from the kinds of strategic planning that are part of the organizational life of many of the organizations we're familiar with. We do things like board retreats, strategic planning meetings, setting goals and priorities. Pastoral planning, on the other hand, is a deeply spiritual process of prayer, of discernment, all under the action of the Holy Spirit. Pastoral planning begins in prayer because we begin by asking, what is Jesus asking of us? And in what way are we called to bear fruit? Father Donald Sr., a noted scripture scholar and administrator, in his book called The Gift of Administration, speaks about the importance of understanding our ministries as a participation in the sacred ministry of Jesus Christ. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, writes, I planted, Apollos watered, but God caused the growth. Prayer and discernment is what keeps pastoral planning God-focused. Secondly, as every gardener knows, the practice of pruning is essential to helping plants, trees, flowers, herbs bear more fruit. Pruning is an essential practice of good gardening. And in the spiritual life, Jesus has some harsh words for the kind of spiritual sterility that can settle into the life of a disciple and a community of faith. In fact, if you remember the parable of the fig tree, he curses it for its inability to bear fruit. Pruning often begins by asking a tough question. Is our parish, our ministry, our diocese living but not fruitful? That is to say, are we satisfied or stuck in the status quo? but not bearing the kind of fruit our Lord would like to see. But as we've lived through the pandemic of COVID-19, we were quite suddenly cast out of the status quo. At first, in many places, the doors to our churches closed and the work of our ministry simply stopped. Then slowly, we began to find new and creative pathways to worship, to educate, to serve our parish families and our communities. And now we find ourselves in a time in which we have some really important questions to ask by way of what our response to ministry through the pandemic is teaching us about how our ministry and programming looks moving forward. In some cases, it's easy to identify what is no longer necessary because we no longer are in a situation of crisis. We also may have discovered that some things are bearing fruit, the kind of fruit we would like to see continue. And here it points to a really challenging piece of good pastoral planning. What needs to be pruned so as to bear fruit? We so often focus our planning around how we can do more, how we can stretch our limited resources, where we can add something. And this kind of thinking does not allow for the discipline of pruning, of stepping back and asking where we're called to bear fruit. And in the light of that, where is their need for pruning and planting? Here, I think the wisdom of St. Teresa of Calcutta is really helpful. We know that Mother Teresa's charism was to love those most suffering, most vulnerable, to care for the men and women living and dying on the streets of Calcutta and around the world. She was often asked why she did not address the structural issues that affect poverty and homelessness. And she would say, this is not my mission. Now, this was not her being lazy or disinterested. She was well aware of the need to change structures. But she also knew that that was not what the Lord was asking of her, and that was not where her mission would bear fruit. No parish, no program, no one organization can offer the kind of catechetical ministry, adult formation, outreach to young adults, or multiple programs of service to the larger community. We can, however, discern what the Lord is asking of us and prune all that does not serve that vision. 
In the garden or in the field, fruitfulness is the result of planting and weeding and pruning. And it's the same in pastoral ministry. As hard as it is to hear for so many of us, planning for mission sometimes asks us to ask, in what way is less more? How are we going to allow the time and the space to accompany and to nurture people and a community's ability to accompany? It may be that we need less program-oriented focus and more focus on creating environments in which accompaniment can happen. It may be asking our pastoral councils, our finance councils, and other leadership groups to commit to making prayer a priority of every meaning and of all planning. Prayer helps us to see that pastoral planning and the work of pruning is not simply a group of parish leaders choosing one ministry over another, but rather in prayer and discernment following the Holy Spirit's lead. Attention to bearing fruit enables pastoral planning to be mission-driven. It's more than adding a program or downsizing to meet a budget or just letting things take their course, never assessing how fruitful the program or the practice might be. Rather, it's prayerfully examining our mission field, ready to weed and prune with a clear understanding of where our ministry, our parish, our office is being called to bear fruit. As St. Paul reminds us, we are God's co-worker, you are God's field, God's building. Go and bear fruit.